Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zess and I make Rampai mini game tutorials. And as usual, before we get into the video, I would like to thank all of my patrons who are supporting my channel and my work. And this month there's also a few more that I've joined. So thank you so much, it is very helpful and also very appreciated, so thank you. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to make a minigame where you need to reassemble a page that have been torn into pieces. For that, we'll be using Rampai's drag and drop functionality, where the pieces will snap into the correct positions when they are dropped within a frame. We'll only be working with non-rotatable pieces, but I also have an add-on script available for my patrons in the voting tier or higher, where the pieces also need to be rotated to the correct orientation. The link to the post for that is in the description box below. To make this minigame, we're going to need to know the correct locations for each piece. For that, we will make sure that when we create the images for it in our chosen image editor, we'll note down where each piece is located on the X and Y axis of the canvas. For that, you'll need to make the canvas the same size as the Rampart project, and then position the puzzle where you want it to be located in the game. Except for the puzzle pieces, I also made a rectangle frame in the same size as the image of the page that needs to be reassembled. And this is made as a guide for the player so they know where the pieces go. Then to tear this image of the page apart, I simply use the polygon selection tool and cut up pieces from it into separate layers. You can make as many or as few pieces as you want, but do remember that you have to note down where each piece is located so the more pieces you have, the more work there will be. So when you have all the pieces that you need and you have assembled them according to where they should go in the frame, you start noting down their coordinates in a text file. Since I am using Photoshop, I click on one of my pieces and then on one of the handles of the band box to get the coordinates to show up right here. Then I make sure to note it down into a text file together with all the other coordinates of the other pieces. Then when you have noted down all of the coordinates and you have made all of the images that you want for your minigame, such as a background image and the frame, you can go ahead with the coding. For the tutorial, I have of course provided all of the images that you need, but when you are ready to create your own images for your own game, you can follow the tips that I have given. In order to follow along with the coding of the tutorial, you are going to need a fresh Rampart project in the size 1920 x 1080 pixels using the latest version of the Rampart engine. You are also going to need the assets for this tutorial, which you can download from the description box below. It is also good if you have at least some basic knowledge in Python programming to understand the coding better, but you might still find it interesting and useful either way. With that said, let's go ahead and have a look at the coding. So here I have the main script file open of the Vampire Project in the Atom editor. And before we look at the code, make sure you have downloaded and added all of the images for the tutorial into your images folder, like this. Now let's start by first having a look at the necessary global variables that we're going to need for the minigame. First, we have a variable called page pieces that will store how many pieces that need to be reassembled, and in this case, they are 12. We also need to know the size of the finished page, and for that we have this full page size variable that refers to a tuple that contains its width and height. Then we have a variable that stores all the coordinates for the pieces, and it is a list variable containing tuples with x and y coordinates. If you find that any of your coordinates happen to have decimals, then you want to make sure that you run them down to the nearest whole number instead, otherwise these are not going to work for the game. This list will then be used later on in a for loop to place each piece in the correct spots. These pieces will then act as invisible spots for the actual draggable pieces to snap to. Then we also have a variable called initial piece coordinates, which is also a list variable that will be filled with random initial x and y coordinates that the draggable pieces will be placed at. Then we can use a for loop again to create each piece and have them be placed at these random locations when the game starts. Lastly, we have a variable called finished pieces, and this one will help us to keep track of how many pieces that have been successfully placed in the correct locations. Now, if we go down to the start label, there's a function call right here to a function named setup puzzle. This function should be called before you show the screen, which contains the minigame. This function is simply used to create random locations for the draggable pieces, which are then added to the initial piece coordinates list. Let's have a look at this function next. So here at the top of the script, we have an init python block where all the python functions for this minigame are located. 
and right here we have the setup puzzle function. In here we have a for loop that iterates as many times as there are puzzle pieces. Since there are 12 in this case, this loop will iterate 12 times to create 12 random locations to place each piece at. Then we have a few local variables to this function inside of the loop. These variables help us to limit where the draggable pieces can be randomly placed. In this case, we will have all the pieces be placed at the right side of the screen, so I have defined a bounding box by adding a start coordinate and an end coordinate where the pieces can be randomly created within. Then we have a variable called randlock, which will contain a random coordinate stored inside of a tuple. To generate the random coordinate, we use Rempy's random function, where the first randomly generated value is the x coordinate and the second is the y coordinate. For the x coordinate, we supply the start x and the end x values to the random function, and for the y coordinate, we supply the start y and end y values. This will make sure that the random function will generate a random value between the two values that we have given it. Now that we have a random coordinate that we can use, we're going to add it to the initial piece coordinates list by using the append function. And now we're going to move on to the screen containing the minigame called Reassemble Puzzle. In this screen, we first of all have the background image for the minigame, then we have a frame displayable where all the pieces should be placed. In this frame, we have a background image of the frame that acts as the guide so that the player knows where they should place the pieces. We set the frame displayable to be the size of the page that will be reassembled, and for that we refer to the full page size variable that contains the size of the page. Then we also position this frame to the right of the screen. Next, we have a drag group containing two sets of draggables. In the first set, we have a for loop that creates all of the pieces of the page and places them in their random initial locations. So in the first iteration of the loop, the first draggable will be placed according to the first coordinate in the initial piece coordinates list, and we grab it by referring to the i variable of this for loop. In the second iteration, it is placed according to the second coordinate, because the i variable in this case will be 1, and then in the third iteration, it will be 2, and so on. We add a name to each draggable by using the drag name property and set it to the current iteration of the loop. So if this is the first iteration, this draggable will be named 0. We also set the anchor point of the draggable to the center, and then the focus mask to true, and drag race to true so that the drag piece will be shown on top of all of the other pieces as it's being dragged around. Then for the image that this draggable should use, we use string interpolation to pick the correct one from the pieces subfolder inside of the images folder. Since the image names starts with 1 and not 0, we add 1 to the i variable to get the correct value that will replace the percent %s inside of the string. The next set of draggables are actually droppables. These we create the same way as before, but we set the draggable property to false and the droppable property to true. This will make sure these pieces cannot be dragged but only dropped onto. These pieces will act as the snappable points, so we place them according to the correct coordinates by referring to the piece coordinates list. We set the dropped property to the name of the function that should run when a dragged piece has been dropped and is overlapping one of these spots. This function we call piece drop, which we will have a look at soon. For the images of these droppables, we do the same thing as before, but we set the alpha property to zero, so they are completely invisible. Now let's have a look at the piece drop function responsible for detecting if a piece has been placed in the correct location. So here we have the piece drop function, and this function requires two parameters that RenPy will automatically supply the values for. The first parameter we call dropped on and contains the droppable that a draggable was dropped on. The second one, called dragged piece, is the piece that was dragged and dropped. This parameter's value will be a list containing all the draggables that were dragged, because in RenPy we can have multiple items being dragged at the same time. In this minigame, we will only ever drag one item at a time, so to access this item from the list, we use two square brackets after the variable name and then supply the value 0 to grab the first and only item in the list. So in this if statement, we check if this draggable item that was dropped has a drag name that is equal to the droppable it was dropped on. If they are equal, then we know that the draggable was dropped onto the correct location. In such case, we snap the drag piece into place by using the snap function available to draggable items and supply it with the droppable's location, which is stored in its x and y attributes. 
After that, we set the draggable property of the drag item to false because once it has snapped into place, we no longer want to be able to drag it. Then we want to add one to the finished pieces variable as we have now finished a piece. In order to modify this variable inside this function, we need to add the line global finished pieces at the top of the function, otherwise we are going to get errors. The last thing we do in this function is to check if the value for the finished pieces variable is equal to the amount of total pieces that we have. Because if they are, then we have placed all the necessary pieces in the correct locations. In this such case, we can jump to a label that will continue the story of the game. In this case, we jump to a label that I have named Reassemble Complete. And as you can see, inside of this label, I've just added a simple background image and then some dialogue as an example of how you could jump to a label from the minigame. And that's really all there is to this minigame to make it work. The only extra thing that I've added to the script is a side image for dialogue and some configuration changes so the image can fit to the side of the dialogue. The side image, by the way, is a free asset made by the user Sudama on itch.io. And the link to the asset, in case you want to get it yourself, is in the description box below. There's also a link to my Patreon page where you can download the complete script for this minigame. And if you're in the voting tier or higher, you can also download the extra script where the player needs to rotate the pieces into the correct orientation before placing them. And if you liked this video, it would be very helpful if you clicked on the thumbs up and left a comment down below to let me know. And if you're interested in getting notified when I upload more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.